What is the coolest way your parents have stood up for you? I was about 7 or 8 years old at the time. My mom and I were driving down Knapp Street in Brooklyn in her tiny Nissan Sentra. A carload of young guys, late teens early 20s, cuts my mom off and hits the brakes. Mom avoids rear-ending them, changes lanes, and goes about her business. However, carload of dongs decide they want to have some fun. So they are swerving near our car, speeding up and not letting us pass, cutting us off, just being dongs about it. Well, this sets off some kind of primal, maternal defense mechanism in my mother. We come up to a red light, and car of dongs is directly in front of us. My mother, who is about 5 feet 3 inches and 100 pounds, throws the car in park, grabs a club from the back seat, it was actually a coffee table leg that we kept back there in case a weapon was needed. Brooklyn was an interesting place in the 80s, and sprints out of the car toward the Dow Chemobile. She starts slamming the trunk and roof of their car screaming, You think you're tough? Picking on a single woman and a little boy. Get the frick out of this car and I'll show you tough. Get out of the fricking car. This must have startled the crap out of these guys. Because they actually ran the red light and pulled a U-turn across three lanes of traffic to escape my table leg wielding psychopath of a mother. TL. DR. My mom attacked a car full of young guys with a coffee table leg to protect me. How I don't know if this counts as standing up for me. But I thought it was pretty cool. So early one morning I went out to my car. Parked on the street outside our house. Only to find a strange man in my car ruffling through my things. I screamed and the guy looked at me and started to bail. My dad, who was totally blind, came out and asked what was going on, and I told him some creepy guy was in my car. My dad then yells, honey get the gun I'm gonna shoot a smother. Those were good times. This older boy who always bullied me got off at the same bus stop as me. It was getting to the point where he was becoming physically violent. When my dad found out, he hid in the woods right by the stop. And when the kid was about to shove me into the ditch, my dad stepped out full Rambo and dragged the kid home by his ears. He was afraid to speak to me for years after that. I was in 4th grade, riding in the back of my mom's van, which was full of kids carpooling to my sister's gymnastics class. I see roads, snow blowing everywhere, my mom's doing about 15 miles an hour. A 16 year old kid who just got his license comes hurtling around a corner going way too fast. Hits us head on. Most of the van walks away with relatively minor bumps, bruises, and a cracked rib or two. Not me. I had only a lap belt, no shoulder belts in the back of the van, and was sitting behind my little sister's car seat. I went face first right into the hard plastic, breaking my nose, my eye socket, and pretty much just the middle of my face. In addition, I managed to separate my upper lip from my gum line. Apparently, you could see into my sinus cavity. So here I am, bleeding everywhere, just regaining consciousness when the ambulance shows up. Unknown to me, my mom had run to the nearest house, before we had cell phones, called 911, run back, done her best to stop my bleeding, made sure all the other kids were okay, come back to me, then rode with me all the way to the hospital. After waiting in there for 5 hours, we're told that we'd probably have to wait until the morning because the oral surgeon needed to stitch my lip back to my gums. On call wasn't able to make it in. Yep, my mom wasn't going to stand for that. The details are fuzzy. Yay for going into shock. But I do know that less than an hour later, that surgeon came flying into the room. After all of this, my dad finally makes it to the air. As soon as he takes my hand, my mom had been holding it the entire 6 plus hours. She passes out and slumps to the floor. Only then do the doctors discover the giant bruise spreading across her body and find out she had broken ribs. Lord knows how she held on that whole time, let alone managed to berate an entire hospital staff into helping me out. TL. DR. My mother gets me the help I need by berating an entire hospital worth of people while ignoring her own broken ribs and other injuries. I, Jkzik, award your mother the world's most awesome super mom trophy. It's about 15 stories tall and made of pure love. Your mother deserves it. This is my favorite story to tell about my mom and dealing with racism in a small town. When I was in kindergarten, I lived in a small, predominantly white town. 
and my family were the only Chinese people in the neighborhood. During lunch one day, a boy cut me in line at the lunch line and said, get out of the way, chink I had no idea what that meant. So I went home that day and asked my mom what the heck a chink was. She was shocked and told me that it was a very, very bad word and that anyone who says that to me is trying to be hurtful. The next day, I'm already pretty mad and soon enough, the bully cuts me and calls me a chink again. So, I did what any fiery little Chinese girl would do and I pushed him as hard as I could into the trash can. Of course, we both get our parents called into the cafeteria because of the fight, and his awful mother comes and starts going off about how terrible I am for pushing her son into the garbage. My mother argued that her son was being a bully and calling me a chink, to which he replied, he called her a chink because that's what you people are. Then, much to the principal's horror, my mother shoved the woman into the garbage can, grabbed my hand, and stormed out. The boy never tried cutting me again. Bro, Art's mom is basically my hero now. My story pales absolutely in comparison. In second grade we were assigned to write an essay on what our parents did for work. Since my mom was a housewife at the time, an admirable job, I chose my dad, the test pilot. I wrote about how my dad was a fighter pilot and shot missiles and flew jets and was super cool, etc. I got a D on the paper and a note from my teacher that my parents had to sign. The note read, while Free Heat Seat has a brilliant imagination, the assignment was to write what my parents do, not what they want to do. Needless to say, my dad was livid. The next day he called in late to the base, decked himself out in full gear, G-belt, helmet, fire retardant gloves, everything and proudly walked me into class. My teacher's jaw dropped and he proceeded to give demonstrations of his gear to the students, letting a couple of them dress up in his spare flight suits and helmets. My teacher then formally apologized to me in front of everyone. Nowhere near as amazing and heartwarming as the ARPS, but it makes me. This was in high school. I was talking to some friends on the staircase as the bell rang and just as we saw the principal walking towards us, we started upstairs to get to class. Just as I turn, he grabs my letterman's jacket tightly jerking it towards him. Subsequently tearing my t-shirt and I stumble down the stairs busting up my lip and bruising my face. I'm about 6 feet 1 200 pounds and I could have walloped the guy but that would have just gotten me in huge crap. He takes me to his office and I sit and get a lecture about being a hooligan and late to class, etc. He tells me my grandfather is on the way. He gets done lecturing and tells me to wait out in the hall. My 6 feet 7. 250 pounds grandfather storms down the hallway towards me and I think I'm gonna get the beating of a lifetime, but he slows down when he notices my jacket and t-shirt and my slightly red face. He walks into the office and starts asking what happened. The principal starts to explain that I was late and started to walk away from him. ETC and my grandpa interrupts him and says, yeah I understand that part, now I'm asking you why he's got a torn shirt and a bruised face. The principal begins to explain that he grabbed my shirt to get my attention, etc trying to make it sound like it was no big deal. My grandfather interrupts him again this time with his voice near shouting level and says, listen to me very carefully, what you did was unacceptable, if you ever put your hands on my son again, I'm giving him my full permission to beat the crap out of you. I can see through the window that my grandpa then moves closer to him and says, and if he won't do it, I'll come back here and do it myself. He then opens the door to leave and says I trust there won't be any more problems and slams the door behind him. He walks past me and says, let's go. I get my butt in gear and follow him out. He says he's taking me home for the day, so I hop in his truck and we head out. He mumbles that the whole thing was bulls under his breath a few times, but I couldn't stop smiling the whole way home. I've never been more proud, especially since he called me his son. Final line killed me. Great story, but the ending is the frosting on the cake. Your mom rocks. Thumbs up to all the awesome mothers out there. I actually suffer from a slight hearing loss, which was 10 times worse when I was younger and in elementary school. My first grade teacher was an absolute B and didn't have a problem pretty much torturing her students. 
One day she was calling me to her desk, but of course, I simply couldn't hear her, so she came to my desk and yanked at my ponytail. I went home and my mother asked me why my hair was lopsided and I explained to her what happened. Furious my mother went to the school the next day and asked my teacher why she thought it was appropriate to pull my hair. My teacher said well I was trying to get her attention and she just got me so frustrated that I pulled her hair. My mother said really? My daughter has hearing loss which I wrote on your little emergency form. So does this mean if I can't get your attention it'd be okay for me to punch you in the face? My mother made my teacher cry that day and get on her knees and apologize to me. Needless to say she backed off for the remainder of the year. Ro, your mom sounds scary if she actually made your teacher get on her knees. Kudos. Not for me, but my brother. My little brother is not little by any stretch, but he's pretty relaxed and certainly not violent. One of the guys in the year above him started giving him crap while walking to the bus stop, and he kept walking. Got punched from behind. Got up and told the guy to frick off. Walked away and got punched. Got punched from behind. Got up and told the guy to frick off. Walked away. And then turned around and blocked the next punch. And then punched the guy about 6 times in the face. From witness accounts. They were quick. And hard. And the guy just crumpled and started crying. My bro just turned and walked to the bus. Principal rings up and basically says he's expelled for violence etc and he's uncontrollable and aggressive and the guy he attacked is a brown belt in taekwondo. So bro must have been crazy violent to be able to beat him. He also could have accidentally killed him. Mum calmly replied that my little brother was not expelled. He was a senior black belt. Not junior. Not the normal 13 year old black belt that some of the other kids had. But the one where he had to fight two older black belt teenagers in front of the master. And despite almost getting his arm broken while blocking kicks. He passed. And he was provoked. Which she knew because three mothers had called her already to say them and their kids were talking about what they saw. And that bro was not expelled from school. Because if he meant to kill him. He'd be dead. Bro had two days off school suspended instead. Other guy got suspended for the same amount of time. TL. DR. Brother defended the crap out of himself. Mum backed him up when the principal called and said my bro was capable of killing. In junior high I was tormented daily. To the point where I was somewhat suicidal. Hearing every day how the world would be better off without you and all the gruesome ways in which I should die can do that to a person. Finally I broke down and told my parents what was going on. Well, my dad was furious, as was my mom. That night, I would later find out, they held a war meeting with my brother, who was captain of his hockey team, and his friends, who were all big beefy guys. My dad, it seems wanted to wring the guy's neck, but didn't want to get arrested. So he sent my brother, who was 16 and still a minor, over with his friends to go knock on his door and told him that if he didn't leave me alone they'd take him out back and shoot him like the little bee that he was. All I knew was that the next day my tormentor was mysteriously absent and after that didn't say so much as a word to me, for which I was very grateful. I didn't even learn about what they did until years later. As for why I didn't defend myself I was a small girl who was horrifically shy, and the guy who was giving me crap was at least a good foot taller than me, and was built like a linebacker. Why the heck he felt driven to make my life miserable I have no idea since I literally had never spoken so much as a word to him before he started calling me names. Junior high is filled with immature kids. When I was very young, 2 or 3 years old, my family went to Orlando to visit the theme parks. One of them, I believe it was River Country, had a petting zoo. Somehow, I managed to wander into an enclosure filled with geese, and 10 or 20 geese surrounded me and started pecking away at me like the buttholes geese are. So, one of my first memories is my dad wading into a flock of geese and just laying waste, kicking them in the butt, plowing a path with rage through a squawking butthole geese. It was awesome. As someone whose parents avoided confrontation and rationalized every little bad thing that happened to me, I just want to say to you all that you should appreciate having what is a fantasy to others. Give your parents a hug or something. My tale definitely won't top yours, but when I was 5 or 6 I was over my older sister's house, 20 years older than I. She had a bunch of friends over and naturally they were all drinking and having a good time. 
a few neighborhood kids and I were running around in our swimsuits and jumping through sprinklers, tossing water balloons, and spraying each other with super suckers. I migrated away from the group to get some root beer when all of a sudden this 25 plus year old guy yells over at me. He leans down and grabs a half filled water balloon and smashes me in the face with it. Since the balloon wasn't filled up all the way, it didn't explode and instead gave me a black eye. I was young so I immediately started bawling. My dad saw what happened and walked over to the guy, who didn't have a swimsuit on and was dressed somewhat formally. My dad grabbed a big bucket filled with water and poured it over his head. Everyone around him started laughing and I was beyond pleased. My dad is my freaking hero. Your dad didn't deck the guy so he's my hero too. I had to register to tell this story. I was called to the school because my cousin, who I had babysat since his mother was on call, had threatened to punch a kid who had bullied him all year long, called him gay, and would draw lipstick on him with the teacher doing nothing. The teacher calls me into the office and we start talking about violence and such and how he shouldn't have threatened the kid. That's when I interrupted the teacher and said Jacob, what your teacher is trying to say is that the next time this kid physically harms you, you need to kick the absolute crap out of him. Your teacher is a P and so is this bully. You have every right to defend yourself and for every day you're punished for defending yourself. We'll go to the zoo or to Six Flags. The teacher was at a loss for words and Jacob felt a lot better. I told him to only attack if the bully attacks first. Days later he kicked the crap out of him so I picked him up from school and I was really proud of the little guy. The whole day he kept chanting I kicked the crap out of a bully which angered his mother because he didn't know the word crap until that day. He graduates from college this year with a degree in chemical engineering and I couldn't be prouder. He still refers to me as his butt kicking cousin. I was going to school in Seoul, Korea in 1988. I was in second grade. At our school, the custodians were laying new cement by the entryway one day after school. We lived across the street from our school, so my brother and I went back after dinner, and made handprints into the cement like kids do. We then got caught by the custodians and were being hit by them as punishment. We could hear dad calling for us, and then he saw what was happening. He ran to one of the custodians, and struck him across the face. He then began kicking the second guy, and finally, punching his groin. He took both of them out in about 5 seconds, while we stood crying. They argued about what we did to the cement, and how we needed to be punished. My dad then replied, if they did something wrong, I'd gladly pay for the damage, and punish my own kids. Why would I need you to beat my kids for me? Dad then took out his wallet, dropped a few 10,001 bills on the ground, and walked us across the street to our house. We were then spanked when we got home. Upvote for Korean discipline. They hit everyone there, but it's still pretty nice. Whoa, my parents will never top that. But in high school we had this gay black teacher who was the absolute biggest most horrible bee you'd ever dread to have as a teacher. She would yell at us for getting answers wrong occasionally. She would literally get right up at your face and rage at you. She wouldn't listen to head teachers who told her to back off. Just an awful horrible woman. And I had her for 4 years and she made me cry weekly because she stressed me out so much. However the school couldn't fire her because they couldn't find another Gaedlik teacher. Pretty scarce on that front here. And if she was gone, so was the Gaedlik teaching program at the school. So in my 4th year at high school, prelim exams were coming up and we were looking to do some practice papers and get some past papers to do at home. She outright refused. Screamed at us for not doing the work she gave us and still wouldn't give us the papers literally the week running up to the exam. So obviously I told my parents, they'd had to go up to the school every year previous to deal with this crap. Parents night came up and they confronted her about it. She seemed completely appalled they would even do such a thing. My mum then basically said to her, listen here, you've made my daughter cry and no one makes my daughter cry like that. If you don't buck your ideas up and sort yourself out, then I'm not scared of going to prison over this. I was like go mum. But, next day in class, I get confronted about my mum and dad at parents night the night before, which is seriously prohibited. Told my parents, they got in contact with the school. School got in contact with her, basically saying her days were numbered because they were looking for a replacement. A year later, I dropped her class thankfully, and they found a replacement. And she is the most amazing, funniest, 
Smartest, downright incredible woman I've ever met. My new Gaelic teacher is my hero because she restored my faith in my language. And my parents are my heroes for sticking by me even when that horrid woman said who will they believe? A bratty pupil or a teacher? Looks like they believed me. B. D. T. L. D. R. Super bitch teacher gets owned by my mum even after saying no one would believe me. My lovely partner isn't a redditor, but I told her about this thread, and she wrote me about an event from her childhood. Here it is. There was no massive insult and no balls out bravado involved, but I have a marvelous instance of a mother finding a creative solution to the slings and arrows of injustice. My fourth grade teacher was an effective instructor, but was often excessively strict. She'd established a pattern of the sort of behavior by the time I was foolhardy enough to turn in a spelling test, which consisted entirely of correct answers, without my name on the top. She ripped it up in front of the class. My mother had recently read an article by Fred Rogers. Yes, the Mr. Rogers. About how important it is to honor your child's creations, as they present them to people as a real part of themselves. She wrote a letter to Mr. Rogers about what my teacher had done, and asked him to talk to her. He did, and when my teacher saw my mother next, she sheepishly said, You tattled on me to Mr. Rogers didn't you she never did anything of the sort to me nor any of her future students ever again i love my mom it's one thing when you hear about people calling other people's mothers because they've done something wrong your mom called mr rogers which is several thousand times better than anything else i've heard i went to a jesuit high school and as part of the curriculum everyone has to take an introduction to philosophy theology course i was 16 when i took the class and had started reading Nietzsche, we were required to give a presentation on a great thinker, and while all the other students picked theologians, I went with Freddy. My teacher was a failed priest with a strong holier-than-thou streak. When I turned in my proposed thinker, he pulled me aside, accused me of trying to turn the class atheist, and told me to stop being such a fake little crap. I saw red for the rest of the day. I had never had anyone question my integrity like that, and I was p. When I got home, I told my parents what happened. Fast forward to the next week, parent teacher night rolls around. At my school the students go with the parents. The last meeting was with this philosophy theology teacher. My parents listened to his presentation, but waited until all the parents left. They walked up to this teacher, and my mom smiled and introduced herself and my father. Mr. XXXX. I'm Heavy C's mother, I want you to know that you'll be getting incredible work out of him this semester, and I would hope you encourage his intellectual curiosity, no matter what topic he chooses to explore. The teacher started to mumble something about being misunderstood. My dad smiled, looked him right in the eye, and said, Heavy C's is only 16, but he's miles ahead of you intellectually. I'm sorry you didn't cut it as a priest. But if you take out your failings on my son again, we'll be back, and not nearly as kind. As we were leaving, the teacher caught my eye and tried to stare me down. My dad saw this and said, really? If you ever look at him like that again, I'll come back here and force you into celibacy, you chubby dumb fuck. I've never known my dad to be aggressive, but I felt like a million dollars walking out of that classroom. I think you're an overeducated 27 year old virgin who likes to hold the hands of superstitious old ladies and promise them everlasting life. I'm picturing your dad as Clint Eastwood. Awesome. My story was really them sticking up for basic rights and does not match your own but still. About halfway through my time at senior school UK state school, all of the girls were called into an assembly about our inappropriate behavior. It turned out the Christians who came in to do youth work with the school children had complained that we were too touchy with each other, too touchy being hugging when meeting and holding hands to walk to class cafeteria together, and that this may give the wrong impression to visitors, that is, that we were all lesbians, and so this had to stop. So obviously I went home and told my parents who immediately rang the local paper and from that the local radio picked it up. Needless to say the school never spoke of it again and I even got taken aside by a few teachers to congratulate me for calling the school out on their bulls equals. TL. DR. Christians accused the girls at my school of having lesbian tendencies that had to stop. Parents got the media involved. From the US. Here and this is infuriating. 
Humans showing decency and respect and love towards each other being twisted and turned into something for political gain makes my blood boil. Good on you. And don't suppress the urge to be warm and loving towards anyone you want to show it to. Okay so this is kinda long, but worth it I think. Also this wasn't for me but my little sis, and kind of my dad. Sis is in junior, high and sitting at home minding her own business, probably jabbering on the phone when the doorbell rings. She answers and it's a friend of hers asking to use the bathroom, a little strange, sure, but she lets the girl in, doesn't lock the door and continues on the phone. A high school girl barges in, snags my sis and pulls her out the door and the shouting match begins. I don't know what it was about but my sis is making a bunch of noise when she shouldn't be which my dad hears and is immediately angry about. He's a bit of a jerk sometimes. Dad starts heading out and my mom follows thinking she's gonna have to keep my dad cool about sis. But they get to the front door and see sis getting beat up by a larger older girl with a high schooler boy and an adult woman just watching. All of this going down on our front porch. Little brother sees what's happening runs and calls 911 and arms himself with a putter and hides in his room. Parents get outside and proceed to start breaking things up. The high school guy goes after my dad. The adult woman goes for my mom. My dad is over 50 BTW. Mom goes mama bear when this woman tries to tackle her and stop her from stopping the fight and trashes the woman. The dude trips my dad and before he could land the first kick while he was down my mom jumps over and stands over my dad and starts knocking the crap out of the dude. Once he's pacified she then breaks up the fight. Adult lady and high school dude take off for the car and the girl that started it all tries to. My mom grabs her and my dad goes over and takes the woman's keys out of the ignition. An argument proceeds. But now these people are scared to start the violence cause the crazy bee that is my mother at the time has already proven she can take em all. In a little bit the police arrive and before they can say a thing the lies start flying. Then one of the cops just tells them all to shut up. Then turns to my mom and says hey, mother's name. How have you been? Haven't been over for dinner in a while. Everyone's face goes white. You wanna tell me what really happened this would be because my mother works with the cop's wife. The story wraps up pretty much as one would expect from here. TL. DR. Mom goes Wolverine on some punks that attack her, my little sis, and my dad. I find it really sad that some adults out there are no better than 12 year olds. Your mom is awesome by the way. When a mom goings mama bear, crap gets real. In no way is this my mom standing up for me, but she was killed in a car accident the 8th of January, 2011 and I had not really mourned her loss until last weekend. For the record I am only 19 and a freshman in college, my mom was just about to turn 52. Anyways, last weekend we were going through her belongings for the first time and I found a box of various things she kept from when I was born. I opened it to find that she had printed out some of the writings I had only written in the past year. It hurt so much to not have her with me at that moment. I couldn't stop myself from crying. My condolences. I am sorry for your loss. I lost her parent at 18 and it sucks. Just take the memories with you and never forget them. Holy crap. What an awesome mom. My story is about my mom as well. I was 10 years old and every day when a friend and I would walk home from school, two boys would chase us home and swear at us and call us names. They even threw things at us for some reason. Still have no clue why. I told my mom about it, and the next day my friend and I ran to my house, the boys following again, and to our surprise my mom had made a couple dozen water balloons and was waiting next to my mailbox. We then began pelting them with water balloons until they were soaked and ran away. And they never chased us home again. Colon 3. Okay, absolutely not even close to this. I moved here from Ukraine halfway though first grade. When I got here, the school services immediately directed me to ESL English as a second language. After they found out that I had a stutter, I went to the speech pathologist. Soon after, I was getting filed for special education. My mother who knew very little English at the time, went out of her way to get me out of special education, getting off from work, and well essentially standing up for me in front of the school board. Thankfully, I did awesome, and never had to go through special education, thanks to my parents. It was nice to write this out. In grade 4, I was moved to a different school in a bad neighborhood because it was the only one that had a gifted program. 
The teacher was this woman called Ms. Crane. I don't know if you've all read Matilda but she was basically Ms. Trunchbull. She was huge, with short orange curly hair and big glasses. On the first day of class, she told us all that if we ever were even the tiniest bit sick, even if we just had the sniffles, we had better not come to class because our germs would get on her and she'd bring them home where they'd make her old. Frail mother sick and her mother would die and it would be our fault. We were all terrified because we knew there was no way our parents would let us stay home if we weren't burning up and the alternative was killing this hypothetical old woman. She was absolutely awful. She picked favorites in the class, arbitrarily, it seemed. And those kids got to do awesome stuff like play on the computer. They would get taken to McDonald's for lunch and on trips to see the Phantom of the Opera. The other kids were left out of these activities and got picked on constantly. They were treated like delinquents and couldn't understand why. Anyway, she wasn't a fan of mine. And about two months in, she went after me for something I didn't do. She accused me of it in front of the whole class and when I said I, I didn't do that she shouted, Are you calling Emmy a liar? I didn't know what to say. I was a really good, geeky kid who would never want to argue with a teacher and I didn't think she was lying I just thought she was mistaken but I couldn't figure out how to express that. I was mortified that this was happening to me. When my parents heard, they believed me 100% and I didn't even have to plead my case. There was no question that they trusted what I told them. My mom called Ms. Crane to explain the situation and tell her how upset I was, but it didn't go well. Ultimately, my parents pulled me out of her class in the middle of November and let me go back to my old school. It wasn't an argument or anything. They just took me seriously and said okay, no problem, and it was done. The way they trusted me when I was 9 really stuck with me and it made me more honest as a teenager because I never wanted to betray that trust. They're good people. Stood up for me? H.A. I have Asian parents. I once asked my mom why she always took the teacher's side, and she said something about it being respectful. I asked her if she would still take the teacher's side if she knew the teacher was wrong, and she said yes, because it's respectful. Frick. Okay seriously though. The kid next door used to kind of push me around. One time I was on the edge of my yard and he ran over me with his bike and called me a jackass and told me to get off his lawn. Well my dad found out about it and got super pee. The kid would wait for us at the bus stop before school too. So one day my dad went out with us. Before we got there he said wait here and went and talked to the kid. I was too far away to really hear what was being said. But the acute expression of fear in the kid's face is something I've never seen equal to this day. My dad came back and went okay. I took care of it, and the kid never bothered me again. I was written up in middle school for kicking the crap out of a bully that picked on me for an entire year. I just had enough of the wet wills and purple nurples to the point that I knocked him out. The only family member in town was my great grandfather, who was in World War I and he slowly walked into the office. The principal told him the story and I told him why I did it so he said in the most Clint Eastwood-like voice to the principal well, if I wasn't so old I'd wipe the floor with you then whoop you again for bleeding all over this nice place. Comma well, if I wasn't so old I'd wipe the floor with you then whoop you again for bleeding all over this nice place. And, stealing that line. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.